Welcome to Creative Futures Architecture School webinar series sponsored by the Association of Collegiate Schools of Architecture. Today's seminar is Careers in Architecture, and my name is Lee Waldrop. Careers in Architecture today will describe the roles an architect can pursue, both in the architecture profession and outside traditional practice. As well, it will outline those career paths beyond architecture, often referred to as non-traditional careers. Finally, <clears throat> it will present information on resources for careers in architecture and what we might call the off-beaten path. Again, my name is Lee Waldrop, and I currently serve within the School of Architecture at the Illinois School of Architecture. I have over 20 years of experience in higher education with an emphasis in academic affairs and career development with architecture students. I am the author of Becoming an Architect, A Guide to Careers in Design, with its third edition coming out last summer, published by Jay Wiley and Son, and the recent author of Career Paths of Architects, a chapter in the um, current edition of the AIA Handbook of Professional Practice. During my career, I've served in three different architecture programs, IIT in Chicago, Illinois, the University of Maryland, and now the University of Illinois. To give a broader context uh, to today's presentation, I thought I'd share some uh, statistics or data about the profession. As you can see on the screen, the National Council of Architectural Registration Board, through its annual survey of architects, reports that there are slightly less than 110,000 architects in the United States. At the same time, the National Architectural Crediting Board, uh, which uh, accredits the architecture programs, reports that uh, a little more than 40,000 students of architecture across its accredited programs, its candidate programs, and its pre-professional programs. And that each year it provides uh, approximately 9,500 degrees in architecture. And then finally, the Department of Labor, uh, a bureau of the uh, US government, predicts that the architecture profession will grow approximately 17% uh, between the years 2012 and the year 2022, which is a growth of about 18,600 jobs during that same time period. And this is uh, slightly faster than average uh, of most or uh, other occupations. Um. Now, with respect to the profession, the again, the AIA, through its membership, reports that 74% of all architects in the United States practice within traditional architecture firms. And a very small percentage also work in universities, government, be it federal, state, or local, uh, corporations, and also construction. With respect to firm size, they report that sole practitioners of simply a single architect make up about 25% of the firms. At the same time, about three-quarters of architecture firms have a staff of anywhere from 2 to 49. And surprisingly, while we think of the large firms, they only make up about 2% of the firms, those with uh, somewhere between 50 and 99 uh, staff. And that's according to the AIA's uh, 2012 firm survey report. So how do you begin a career in architecture? How do you progress from graduation with an accredited degree to becoming an architect? If we follow the AIA's definition of architect's positions, you can see that the path seems somewhat linear, progressing from student to intern, level intern, to a third year intern, uh, once you become licensed, and then depending on the firm, that path continues from uh, architect one to architect designers three, all the way up through project manager, department head, or uh, senior manager, junior principal, partner, and concludes with senior principal and partner. And this can be seen as a more traditional, uh, almost corporate ladder approach uh, across one's profession. And that might last uh, anywhere from uh, 30 to a 40-year career from one graduates from college. To look at it uh, a little differently, uh, with the help of Dana Cuff's book, uh, The Story of Practice from 1993, we see that the path not only has uh, traditional job titles, but also levels of responsibility. 
And so here you can see certainly at the student level the experience is to gather knowledge and preliminary skills uh, when you're starting out in your career. You're simply gathering experience and eventually starting to display that experience. Um, in your middle years, you're developing uh, responsibility, gaining autonomy, uh, perhaps demonstrating competency. And then fun eventually, when you're a full-fledged uh, partner in a firm, you're simply overseeing the widening sphere of influence within your um, career field. Now, one starts to think that uh, an architect um, is kind of a, a broad statement, but within traditional practice, and I found this list uh, by John Gresco uh, of HDR in Chicago, Illinois, who outlines what might be considered traditional career paths within a traditional practice. In other words, we've all heard of the designer, the individual who develops the vision for the project. But beyond that, there's a number of other uh, career paths within the, the traditional track that one can pursue. And they're listed here in the next slide. Uh, planner, uh, you have the technical side. Certainly with the onslaught of BIM, you've got people who are now becoming BIM modelers, individuals who are experts on life safety, uh, code, and accessibility, specifications. Uh, CCA or construction contract administration. Continuing, you have graphics, people who are experts on the marketing effort, perhaps the programmers, and this is not computer programmers, but rather those that determine uh, space analysis within a project. Interiors, you also have those that deal with the enclosure, cost estimating, the project management, relatively new field of sustainability, and certainly you have marketing. Now, these there are also firms that develop specialties. There are certainly architecture firms that provide opportunities to showcase talent and interest, but there are also those that perhaps focus strictly on programming or design or construction cost contract administration or even sustainability. There are even some firms that focus on particular building types such as healthcare, religious, justice facilities, housing. Uh, one firm in particular, Animal Arts in Boulder, Colorado, focuses only on facilities related to animals, including veterinarian hospitals, uh, shelters, and pet resorts. As a specialist in healthcare of architecture, you can become a certified healthcare architect with the American College of Healthcare Architects, ACHA. There are certain knowledge communities of the AIA that focus their energies on building types or specialties, which include the Academy of Architecture for Health, the Academy for Architecture for Justice, the Committee on Architecture for Education, and the Interfaith Forum on Religion, Art, and Architecture, just to name a few. Another means to expand perhaps your career prospects longer term within the profession is through supplemental architectural services. Um, because of the e economic downturn, the AIA created the Supplemental Architectural Services Program, which was a series of detailed essays and slide presentations to offer assistance to architects in expanding their consulting services. So if you look at the list on the screen, you can see that these services are not typically offered within a traditional architecture firm, but rather would be extras. And so as you review this, you might see that you really do have an interest perhaps in energy monitoring or perhaps um, historic preservation or strategic facility planning. And so you could seek out uh, opportunities within a firm or as you progress in your own firm perhaps to pursue Now, we've talked about traditional practice. Let's continue with what might be considered outside traditional practice. These are individuals who are certainly still pursuing uh, architecture in the traditional sense, but the setting in which they work is slightly different. And I actually love this quote by Richard Hobbs on the screen. The great potential for the profession is actually outside of the box, outside of traditional practice. So beyond traditional practice, architects work in a number of other settings. While no exact statistics are kept, it's estimated that one in five architects 
work outside private practice. And these include corporations and institutions. And I always uh, joke to some extent, but would you like to work at McDonald's? And I'm not suggesting that you uh, flip in burgers, but rather are working in their corporate headquarters to design McDonald's restaurants um, around the world. Government and public agencies. Federal, state, and local governments commission more than one quarter of all construction annually. As such, opportunities exist for architects in public agencies. Many departments of government, including the military, employ architects. In addition to traditional tasks, architects manage facilities and projects and oversee construction. Emerging professionals may find it difficult to start a career in a public agency, but such careers can be extremely worthwhile. Employers of public architects, as represented on the AIA Advisory Group of Public Architects, include the State of Ohio, Texas A&M, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Thomas Jefferson National Lab, the City of Dallas, and the Judicial Council of California. So it's quite a broad list. And then education and research. Uh, we can learn from the National Architectural Crediting Board that there are over 6,000 faculty members that work within accredited programs in architecture. Additionally, with over 300 programs in architectural technology at community colleges, that there are many opportunities uh, for architects to teach at that level as well. In addition to teaching, architects serving as faculty also pursue research interests to test ideas that connect education and practice. And I think this is a growing trend. So aside from teaching future architects, many faculty members also maintain private practice. And then last, which is really kind of my particular favorite, is beyond architecture. And as noted in the quote by Irene Dumas Tyson, as a profession, architects offers a myriad of possibilities for rewarding careers. And architecture education is an excellent preparation for many career paths beyond architecture. In fact, career possibilities within an architecture education are truly limitless. Anecdotal estimates suggest that only one half of architectural graduates pursue licensure. Career paths beyond traditional practice tap into the creative thinking and problem-solving skills developed from an architectural education. The interest in this path is growing. In fact, the results of the most recent AIA NCARB Internship and Career Survey of Interns and Emerging Professionals indicate that nearly one-fifth of respondents do not plan on pursuing a traditional career in architecture, although they still plan to obtain their license. Over the last four years, the website Archinect an online forum for architecture has featured over 25 architects who have applied their backgrounds in architecture to other career fields through its Working Out of the Box series. While most are still connected to design in some form, the range of career fields is quite diverse. Filmmaker, organic farmer, artist, design director at a resort hotel chain, user experience designer, information designer, and design technology consultant. Also, the reasons for these are varied and typically not tied to the recent economic downturn. The slide highlights a couple of architecture graduates from a school um, on the West Coast that graduated during the economic downturn, and they did struggle in finding employment. However, they used their entrepreneurial skills as an architectural graduate and developed uh, a brand for a driving truck on ice cream, which started in Los Angeles and is now expanded to other cities around the country. For purposes of his doctoral thesis, Robert Douglas studied non-traditional careers, or what he calls maverick architects, and found those that he studied credited design thinking is helpful in their careers beyond architecture. From his research, architecture graduates and architects pursued careers in law, investment banking, real estate development, computer software, lighting design, film production, set design, cultural policy, criticism and journalism, facilities planning, land planning and management, industrial and product design, arts programming, structural engineering, highway design, public arts installation, architectural photography, painting and sculpture, and clothing design. And you can see this is a very exhaustive list. As well, a, a recent issue of Columns, which is the AIA Pittsburgh magazine, had an article entitled, It's a Wonderful Life, which highlighted architects who built new careers after first having one as an architect. Most notably, the article outlined the path of actor Jimmy Stewart, who graduated from Princeton with architecture degree, but instead pursue, pursued acting. 
Next, it highlighted four individuals who, after successful careers in architects, moved to new career paths, development, needlepoint or fiber art, community design, and construction supervisor. In each case, they discussed how the education and background in architecture paved their way for their new chosen career. Leslie Wiseman, as the slide projects, architectural graduates who are in command of the powerful problem-defining and problem-solving skills of the designer will be fully capable of designing their own imaginative careers by creating new definitions of meaningful work for architects that are embedded in the social landscape of human activity and life's events. As well, we can think of those careers that are emerging, that may be starting to take off within the profession and perhaps are coming down the line as the profession continues to uh, grow into the future. Scott Simpson, who is a senior fellow with the Design Futures Council, highlights, for those willing to take up the challenge, there has never been a more exciting time to be an architect. We have the talent, tools, and processes to make an enormous difference. If only we're willing to use them. This is a leadership opportunity. And so you start to look at those possibilities that are coming. One I've mentioned before, which is certainly sustainability or green design, certainly that's a, a a needed uh, subfield within the profession. New technologies, the use of social media uh, as we start to use technology in ways that have uh, not been used before. I mentioned before building information modeling. There are also new practices. There are actually firms that are created uh, each day that are slightly different than the traditional route. Uh, integrated project delivery, which looks at the process of uh, design, build, bid, build as uh, perhaps passe and a way of bringing the construction and into earlier part of the design process. One skill that's needed is certainly collaboration. Another growing subfield is the use of public interest design that was popularized really by Cameron Sinclair. And then certainly, as noted through this webinar, distant education and learning. So what does this all add up to? In some respects, there are hundreds and limitless careers that an architectural graduate can pursue. This list up on the screen now is just a small sample of some of which we've already talked about and others that we haven't talked about. Um, you'll note that, in fact, the current president and chief executive officer of Chrysler, uh, Syed Sharab, uh, is a graduate of an architectural program at the University of Detroit. Evan Sharp, who is the inventor or founder of Pinterest, uh, graduated from Columbia with a degree in architecture. And so I think there are just a limited list of opportunities for you as an architectural graduate to continue um, in whatever you're interested in. Next is a chart that I uh, have the liberty of uh, borrowing from Phil Bernstein, who's an architect with Autodesk, which really symbolizes the design discipline and its outer ring. So if you look at the center, there's certainly design and architecture. The next ring is tech technical or the production and construction administration. Next is construction and construction management. Outside of that, which is really not the purview of the architect traditionally, is building operation and facilities management. And then extending out from that are all of these rings of product design and software and sustainability design and real estate finance and interiors, gaming and special effects, uh, visualization, digital design. So you start to wonder where is it that you want to fall within this uh, target uh, to know where your career may lead. There are many resources, uh, this webinar just being one of those. I have found in my circles that people um, or social media, LinkedIn in particular, are great ways to find out what others with a degree in architecture are doing. Uh, again, there's a slide of my book, Becoming an Architect, which highlights a number of individuals in these other areas. Um, the Eco Guide to Careers talks about careers kind of on the periphery. Um, some of these other resources as well. Uh, the Architects for, the, for Other Things uh, Tumblr uh, website shows Jimmy Stewart and others who started out in a career in architecture who have gone into other things. And I mentioned previously 
the uh, Working Out of the Box series by uh, Archonnect.com. I just kind of want to end um, with a story which is all about um, thinking of yourself as a builder uh, and that really determining that you're in control of the house, i.e. your career that you build, and paying attention to um, how you address uh, the production and the construction of each item in that house. Uh, to build wisely, it's the only life you'll ever build, and that even if you live in it for one day more, that that day deserves to be lived graciously and with dignity. The plaque on the wall says, life is a do-it-yourself project. So with that, um, I'll share with you my um, Twitter account as well as my email. Uh, I do have a blog uh, on this topic, and at this point, I'd like to make available uh, the opportunity to provide questions that I'd be glad to answer for the remainder of the session. OK. Um, <clears throat> again, if you have any questions, I'll encourage you to type them into the Q&A window. Um, there have been a couple that have come in throughout the session, and I'll uh, start with. Um, the first one that I'll address is uh, an individual that asked the question about not wanting to pursue a traditional track of becoming a partner in a firm, but rather possibly owning their own firm with the idea of affordable housing, and what minors or classes might be uh, good to take as part of their education. And I think on the surface, um, while I'm not an expert on um, opening my own firm, I do think that uh, a minor or courses uh, from uh, the School of Business on your campus would certainly be beneficial. Um, at the same time, I think with any question that comes along uh, to ask individuals that may be a few years ahead of you uh, and are, have already kind of uh, started that track uh, to inquire with them as to what uh, might be good things to do. So actually contacting a firm that uh, has uh, doing the things that you want to do and seeing what they might suggest for actual courses. Um, in addition, I would say getting experience or internships um, uh, in the same kind of uh, firm or avenue that you're looking to perhaps pursue in the longer term would be beneficial. Another question um, talks a little bit about you know, just what's the scope of a typical internship uh, perhaps at the undergraduate level. Um, and I think what I uh, decided to do was to go ahead and just find a, a, a job notice online uh, by just typing in architectural intern job descriptions. And just, uh, again, it's going to vary slightly from firm to firm, but here's just a sample of some activities that the firm would be looking for an intern to do. One would be to be responsible for preparing presentation drawings and models and developing designs and technical solutions throughout the phases of a project, participate and contribute to design discussions, idea generation and design work in drawing, model, and 3D formats, generate revisions and corrections, attend client meetings, participate in construction site visits. So you can see that the uh, job descriptions would be fully across uh, the scale of a project uh, one other source that might be beneficial is to read the IDP guidelines, the intern development program, uh, and to look in the back as to the training experiences, because that starts to describe the type of work experiences that you need uh, as you progress through your um, career. And I think this might be uh, slightly similar between undergrad and graduate, so whether you're an undergraduate student uh, or a graduate student. Um, <clears throat> Another question um, has come in with respect to um, new practices. Um, one individual mentioned an interest in um, uh, factory built uh, buildings or building process, uh, whether it be in industry or research. Um, and I think all of this is new. Uh, and so my source usually is uh, the internet. Uh, people that have uh, written blogs or finding organizations or companies or firms that are doing these type of work. Um, I know of one project that uh, Kieran Timberlake did um, in the Northeast where it was a, a remote site and almost 80% of the entire house was built in a factory or off-site and then shipped to the site for um, its final uh, construction. So I think in one sense, uh, depending on your area of interest, 
is to seek out um, individuals uh, either through the internet, uh, through professional associations, through educational institutions, uh, members of ACSA that are doing this kind of research and uh, contact them for possibilities of getting involved in some capacity. Um, <clears throat> another question um, which is probably more appropriate for one of the later sessions this afternoon is should one apply to a master's in architecture immediately after graduation or should they gain experience for a year or two? Uh, this is a question that's posed to me constantly by our students here at the University of Illinois at the undergraduate level, uh, either as juniors or seniors. Uh, and my answer really is it depends on you as the individual. I think there is uh, a great bit of benefit to taking time off and entering the world of work something that maybe you haven't had a chance to do on a full-time basis to get that experience and that that starts to inform perhaps what you might do next. It might impact the types of graduate programs that you enter. I know of one of our recent graduates was very interested in preservation and wasn't really sure if she should pursue an architecture degree or a preservation degree. She went into the world of work um, for a firm that did primarily preservation and now she's going to be entering into a graduate program in preservation in the fall uh, and so she gained that from that experience. I know many students are very uh, uh, strong on going straight through into graduate studies. Um, so in that sense, um, it really is a personal question. I will say if you are going to go out into the workforce that I would suggest that you do it for at least two years um, because it's really not uh, fair to the employer for you to just start and then leave after one year, plus you'll have a chance to interact uh, with a project for a longer period of time. Um, <clears throat> one other question came in with respect to um, scope as a software program as an architect. And obviously uh, architects, like every other professional, uh, has uh, an opportunity to use software. And uh, as Bill Bernstein works for Autodesk, uh, I know that there are individuals who have, uh, that have been trained as an architect that have entered into uh, the field of computer software or, um, or the like. Um, <clears throat> Acadia, which is an association of computer-aided design in architecture, is one resource that you might look into, um, or contacting uh, like uh, Graphisoft or Autodesk and see what opportunities uh, there might be if you have a degree in um, architecture and want to pursue something um, like software programming. Um, one other question um, is asking about how to enter into the world of education, uh, perhaps to become a professor uh, from faculty and perhaps going into administration. And I think the, the best source, depending on where you are in your personal career, is certainly to seek out opportunities to teach while you're in school. Uh, that might be as a graduate assistant or perhaps uh, ways of um, volunteering to critique students' uh, work uh, through uh, formal reviews with current faculty or just on your own uh, with some of your classmates uh, just to get that experience. Um, I do know that higher education, at least in the United States, is very rigorous in its hiring processes, so it's very difficult sometimes to get a tenure or tenure track position uh, right out of school, and so you might um, want to enter the uh, traditional uh, firm, but then at the same time keep involved with your school to volunteer to come back as a critic. Uh, they may have a need and call on you as an adjunct to teach a class for a semester or two. Uh, another source which uh, some individuals try and stay away from perhaps but is still viable is a community college. There are a number, over a hundred community colleges that have architectural technology or similar type programs and they're always looking for faculty to teach uh, in you know, CAD or drawing or design. Um, uh, another question has come in with respect to um, pursuing a four-year degree versus a five-year degree. I'm going to defer that to the uh, two o'clock session, which is on selecting an undergraduate program. Um, I do think the four plus two route does provide you opportunities to seek out uh, graduate fields in an area that you might not have thought of when you first entered college. Um, 
I saw, sorry to be so rushed. Um, I see that our time is almost up. Uh, and again, I wish you the best. And if you have questions, you can certainly contact me by my email or through ACSA.